Hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Romero, a graduate of Eastern Virginia Medical School, a family physician, former Virginia State Health Commissioner, and now the director of the M. Foskey Brock Institute for Community and Global Health here at EVMS. Ebola is an ongoing health concern, and EVMS wants to make sure you are prepared to respond if a patient with Ebola seeks your care. This preparation, however, is also incredibly important for infection control in your office. The CDC regularly asks physicians and practices to watch out for infectious diseases such as SARS, swine flu, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, and bird flu, not to mention influenza and viral gastroenteritis. In preparing and practicing for Ebola, you and your office are actually reducing the risk of infectious disease transmission to your patients and office staff. <coughs> the key to infection control is identifying a patient at risk, isolating the patient, and calling the appropriate authorities. Each office should be prepared to respond to a patient with an infectious disease, and flu season is a great time to remind ourselves what to do. Your office will need to designate an infection control officer. He or she will need to be on the CDC Health Alert Network for updates and news alerts, and they should make sure that the office has the necessary personal protective equipment ready. An impermeable gown, a face mask, a face shield, two pairs of gloves, a disposable adhesive thermometer. Next, the officer should look at their office layout and patient flow to determine the best way to quickly identify and isolate a febrile patient with an infectious disease. The goal is to reduce transmission to others in the office by moving the patient to a care room with a door that limits contact with others. The room should have non-porous <laughs> coverings on the chairs, tables, and pillows, along with a biohazard receptacle. Your office should also have a respiratory illness station with large signs that encourage anyone with a fever to put on a mask and wash their hands. The sign should also ask the patient to check in with the receptionist immediately if they have traveled anywhere overseas in the last three weeks. Now, here's what you should do if someone at risk of infectious disease seeks your care. Remember, the first step is to identify a patient at risk and ideally you should do this before they even arrive. When a patient calls for a visit, ask them if they have a fever, followed by recent foreign travel within the last three weeks. Have you had any foreign travels to Africa within the past 21 days? This will help you identify those at risk who may need evaluation by your local health department. Once you have identified that a patient is at risk of infectious disease, the next step is to isolate the patient. Do not leave the house, stay isolated, and we will have a provider um, to gain contact with you, okay? You can either call your local Department of Health or ask the clinician to contact the patient directly and further assess their risk. If a patient at risk of infectious disease arrives at your office, they should put on a mask and sanitize their hands before checking in with the receptionist. The sign you have up should be a reminder for them. Once the mask is on, the receptionist is safe as long as she or he stays three feet away from the patient and does not touch any of the patient's bodily fluid. The receptionist escorts the patient to a pre-designated isolation room to reduce time of potential exposure to others in the reception area. Each practice should have an isolation area or room as far as possible from other patient care areas. The provider will see you shortly, okay? Okay. All right. Now, the patient has been quickly identified and isolated. Remember, if you don't touch bodily fluids, there is little risk of infection transmission. Even if the patient arrives with a fever and suspicious travel history, it is still more likely that they have influenza or some other more common infection. But now that they have been isolated, I put a patient in the isolation room. Your office staff and patients are protected. At this point, the infection control officer should gather history from staff. He has a fever and he traveled to Africa within the past 21 days. And call the local health department 
with history and symptoms with a high suspicion of Ebola. And he has a one-day history of fever, malaise, headache, no diarrhea, vomiting, pain or bleeding. Um, but he might have had a potential exposure to a patient with similar symptoms two weeks ago when he was in Sierra Leone. If you were part of the EVMS medical group, yes. you would also contact the EVMS Infection Control Response Team for guidance. Based on the initial risk assessment and guidance from the local health department, the infection control officer can decide to gather more information from the patient. They can put on additional personal protective equipment and enter the room. Again, if you don't touch bodily fluids, can you go ahead and put this on your forehead for me? The risk of transmission is practically zero. The infection control officer should record and follow up any instances of close contact, including unprotected exposure within three feet or contact with bodily fluids. Further action in the office will be based on review by the local Department of Health. If the health department decides that the risk of infectious disease is low and there are no known bodily fluids in the room, the chance of transmission is nearly zero. But it is reasonable to wipe the non-porous areas of the room that the patient likely touched with the approved sterilizer wipes, leaving the room off limits for at least 10 minutes. This will allow for all infectious diseases, like the flu or viral diarrhea, to be removed. So. In summary, office preparation, phone scripting and training, receptionist scripting and training, and knowing who to contact will allow for quick identification and isolation of a patient at risk of infectious disease. If you take these steps, you will protect your office staff and patients while safely managing patients with a fever. These same principles and protocols will protect your office and staff year-round from influenza, gastroenteritis, and newer emerging infections from around the world. Thank you.